Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching all that stuff. I appreciate it, hope you're having a great day. And in this video, I am in Topaz Studio 2. It's a fun product, it's got a lot of powerful filters and that's what I'm talking about in this video. I'm gonna talk in this video about what I consider the five most useful or practical, uh, powerful, best? Uh, I hate to say best. Um, it's uh, Best is very subjective. In fact, all of this is subjective because I'm subjecting you to my opinion of it. Uh, but these are five filters that I use again and again and again because they're very flexible, adaptable, practical, useful. I don't know what the word is, um, but uh, let's get into it. So I've got a photo here. I'm going to go ahead and get the first filter, and that is the basic adjustment. And i got to be honest, that uh, that name is a bit of a misnomer because it's basic adjustment to me, I would think, okay, maybe a little bit of contrast maybe a little bit of this or a little bit of that, but it's a lot more than a little bit of anything. As you can see, um, you've got some, some great options here. You do have the exposure, which I'm gonna use on this photo. This is a night shot from Chicago. Some of you may recognize it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and brighten that exposure a little bit. You've got clarity here. You've got shadows and highlights, blacks and whites, and of course you have color down here. So I'm gonna bump up the saturation. I'm gonna change the temperature and go quite a bit more blue. Maybe add a little bit of tint as well. And uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a great filter. I mean, I, uh, you know, this is not a massive difference from there to there. Whoop, is that on? Yeah, there we go. From there to there. Um, but you know, it makes an impact and there's so much in this basic adjustment filter that I think it's, it's, it's very close to being like a developed filter that you might find in Luminar or on one. It doesn't have quite all the exact same stuff, but it's fairly similar. And uh, anyway, that's why I consider it one of the most uh, useful, practical, powerful, best, whatever filters in Topaz Studio because you can do a lot with it and it can really help you bring your photo from kind of, you know, eh, to much more interesting. Certainly gives you a lot of control over the light and color, which is what I like about it. So that's filter number one. Now filter number two, I'm gonna go ahead and add that. That is AI Clear. And this is a beautiful filter. It is very powerful. I absolutely love this thing. Um, and it's, uh, as the name implies, it's an AI-based filter. It helps you clear up noise, but it also allows you to, to bring back detail and sharpness and things like that across your photo. The one thing about it is it's a bit of a resource hog. As you saw, uh, the, the progress bar kind of was going across the top there, and it can take uh, a, a moment or two. Um, and um, you know, every time you touch the filter and make adjustments, it goes through and kind of rethinks things. But it's very powerful. I'm gonna zoom in. Let me just say 100. Uh, no, I think 100, let me go back. Um, let's just zoom like this. Whoops, um, something like that. And then let me bring it over here. Um, and let me just turn this off and on. So there's off. You can see a little bit more noise in the sky and a little less sharpness in the buildings and on. Uh, a little bit less noise in the sky, a little more sharpness in the buildings. And, and I didn't do anything yet. So I would come in here, I'd probably say medium on remove noise. I would probably recover details a slight bit and you give that a moment and, and uh, let it think through and then you can see how much of an impact it's had on the photo. So there you go. If you look at the photo, let me show you the before. There's before AI clear. If you look at the buildings, not quite as crisp in the sky, definitely noisier in the after. I mean, that sky looks beautiful and smooth, but that's the beauty of it. It is AI based, it's very intelligent. So it's recognizing these buildings and, and saying, hey, I bet Jim, it doesn't know it's Jim, of course, uh, but hey, I bet Jim really wants the buildings to be a little crisp and probably the sky to be a little softer. And that's exactly what Jim wants. So one more time, there's the before, a little noisy in the sky. You know, this was a high ISO, I think ISO 2000, handheld at F2, uh, balanced on uh, the edge of a bridge. So not the sharpest photo you're ever gonna come across and certainly not the, the, the least noisy, but you look at it now after applying AI Clear and I mean, that, that's awesome, I think. So I'm gonna go back to Fit and um, I think that's had a beautiful impact on the photo. Let me jump in to the next filter. Now I removed AI Clear simply because I don't want it to recalculate every time, but the next filter is the Curves filter and this will not be a tutorial about curves. I could spend 15 or 20 minutes talking about the curves filter. If you're not familiar with it, um, I've done videos about it in other apps like Luminar. You can check some of my history there. 
Um, I'll try to remember to link one up there. But uh, lots of power over your, your tonal range, right? Your, your contrast, your highlights and shadows, as well as colors. So what most people do with the curse filter is they'll come in and they'll drop a couple of points. They'll uh, do what's kind of, uh, not kind of, what is called an S-curve. It's a nice way to add a bump of contrast. And all I'm doing is you can see this line here is making a gentle S kind of shape. Um, and if I turn that off, you can see before and after, really not much of a difference. Um, let me show you some of the color stuff you can do. Um, each of these uh, blocks here represents the different color ranges. And um, again, if you're not familiar with it, red, green, and blue, th those are your basic colors in an image, but you can make so many color adjustments. Um, and you can do it across highlights or shadows. Honestly, um, we could be here a while. I'll do uh, like a simple tone curve um, in the blues. Um, Actually, I'm not, yeah, I'm gonna do something like that. If you look at that, I mean, let me show you the before and after now. There's before, much more yellow, and after, much more, more blue, and that's, again, not a video about the Curves tool, just trust me. Um, it's very powerful. I should probably come back and do one about using Curves here in um, Topaz Studio 2, but it's the same, really, the way it works in every app. So check out my videos, check out somebody else's videos but it's, it's worth learning about the Curves tool because it's super powerful and I think gives you so much control over your photos that it's well worth learning about. So that's why I included Curves in this video about the most powerful, useful, practical, best, I don't know what I'm gonna call this video, uh, but that's why I included it in this video. Let me clear that and get another one. Okay, uh, the next one is Precision Contrast and you've probably heard me talk about Precision Contrast in other videos, but it's just a, an incredible filter. I wanna look at my notes and see what I did here. Um, I'm gonna take micro up to about 50 something, so something like that. And I'm gonna take low up a little bit as well, so like mid 20s. And you can see what it's doing to the photo. Let me show you the before and the after. Let me zoom in a little bit to give you a little bit better view of that. So one more time, let me turn off precision contrast. Before and after, it's a nice punch. Uh, now keep in mind, I've removed the AI clear, which cleaned up some of the noise that you may see in the sky here. But for my final image, I'll, uh, I'll add it back. I just don't want it slowing me down because as you saw, AI clear does tend to recalculate or recompute each time. But precision contrast, amazing filter, lots of control over the contrast, but also the great thing about it is, and why it's so versatile, useful, practical, powerful, best, whatever it is this video is called, you've got shadow, mid-tones, highlights down here. You've also got color control. So you've got saturation, vibrance, and color contrast. You can have a huge impact on your image, honestly, just using precision contrast. Uh, that, plus basic, you could probably get pretty dang far to having a fully edited image. That's why I love it. That's why I've included it here in this list. And I'm gonna turn that off, remove that, and show you the last one. This is filter number five, and that is one of my favorites, and that's quad tone. And I like it because, as the name implies, it's four and it's tones. It's really, it's really quad color. Um, well, that's probably not true. It's color tones uh, for four different uh, tonal values. So you got black, shadows, highlights, and whites, as you can see here, and it allows you to go in and adjust, uh, pick a color and adjust the color for any of those uh, tonal values. Now, personally, um, for night shots like this, I actually like it just the way it is. I mean, as I drag this over here to about 50, I'm getting a real blue kind of, I don't know, Gotham City kind of Blade Runner look going on here, um, which I kind of like, but that's that's the basics of this filter. Here's what you do if you wanna make adjustments to it. You just click on any of these colors and it brings up a color wheel. You can increase or decrease the brightness value and then you can move this around to pick a different color for uh, you know, whatever, uh, uh, you know, whatever brightness value you've chosen. So you have great control over, over the, um, the overall look of color in your photos. And I'm a big color guy at heart. I love to control colors and make them look just the way I want them to look. And that's why I included quad tone in this video because it's basically split toning with four, right? So instead of just highlights and shadows, it also has blacks and whites, and you can pick a color for any of those and then adjust the intensity and the exposure value, uh, effectively the saturation of any of those. So it gives you massive control. So with the basic adjustment, 
I gotta look at my list here. Um, the Curves Filter, the AI Clear, Precision Contest, and Quad Tone. You have massive control over your photo and it can allow you to go from really a basic, unedited kind of blah photo to something that you're really proud of and excited about. So I'm gonna go uh, do a quick edit on this and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so I went in and added some filters, stacked a few things, and took it from this original to this finished product. So let me reset the filters and walk you through that real quick. Okay, I started with a basic adjustment, and over here I uh, increased exposure and clarity a little bit, and then bumped up saturation, took down temperature, added some tint, and basically went from kind of a, uh, a darker kind of blah photo to one that's a bit more vibrant and uh, ready to be edited, and I generally prefer to use the basic adjustment first. Second was quad tone, and that was literally just taking the built-in, uh, not built-in, but the standard default colors for each of these four tonal values, and I went to about 49, so I bumped it up quite a bit. There's the before, and there's the after. It gave me that nice kind of bluish look, which I really like in my night uh, cityscapes. Next was AI clear, and in this case, um, I just uh, went in with some basic edits, and in fact, I think I'm gonna just change that and go with medium on remove noise, and maybe recover details, bring that up just a tiny bit more. Okay, and that's looking good. Um, this time, uh, let me close that. Um, the next one I went for was another basic adjustment, and that's a great thing, is you can stack the same filter again and again if you feel like you need to. Uh, here, I bumped up shadows a little bit, and then increased saturation, gave it a little bit of warmth uh, this time and a little bit of tint. So uh, just kind of went back on the color a little bit to add a little bit of warmth, or excuse me, the temperature uh, reduction towards the blue that I did in the previous uh, basic adjustment filter. I kind of reversed some of that this time to give it a little bit more warmth. So there it is before. It's, it's fairly blue, which I like. Some of that was also accentuated, accentuated with the quad tone filter but now I've got looking a little bit more the way I want it to look. And then my final filter was precision contrast. And in this case, um, as you can see here, I went in and just masked it out of the sky because I didn't need any uh, precision contrast added to the sky. So I took that out of there and that allowed me to go from my original photo like that using four of these five. I just didn't really need curves filter in this one, but still, I think it's still one of the most powerful filters you could have and use here in Topaz Studio. But that's it for five filters and a, uh, a sample workflow on how I did it. One more time, the original and the final, and I hope that helps. If you have any questions, let me know down below. Feel free to like, share, subscribe, all that stuff, and I'll see you soon, my friends. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. Take care, have a great day, and adios.